What's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. Today, we'll be taking a peek over here at the Bitcoin price chart and the altcoin market. We have quite a red start to the week this week. We'll take a peek over there at Ethereum's price chart and XRP as well. Try to see if we can figure out what's going on in the market to start this red week off. We'll go back and look at some of the things we've been talking about in the last few weeks to see if the market is playing out the ways we had discussed to see if we can make some sense to the action that's happening here. This weekend, I did return back from Dallas. If you caught my videos last week, I was there in Dallas with Link2 at a meetup. While I was there, I did put out a video discussing seeing an altcoin start to break out and diving back into what we were talking about throughout the entire week was that the Ethereum price chart was mirroring that of a topping structure that we've seen happen here in the crypto market before, in particular, Bitcoin's ABC correction we saw back in 2018. And while we were seeing positive price action over there in the cryptocurrency market, that I wouldn't be fooled by it over here on Ethereum, that it indicated, hey, if the structure is going to continue playing out, there's still further down to go for Ethereum. Also, one of the things that came out over the weekend was the scheduling of the opening briefs for summary judgment for the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit case. So we'll talk about that as well. And while I'd love to give you like a picture reel or talk about what my week and weekend were like there in Dallas, I think since we're starting this week off red, everybody was like, hey, can we talk about these price charts first? I agree. That's what we'll do. The theme of last week was talking about the Ethereum price chart and the topping structure coming out of there. I think we did multiple videos in there kind of diving into different statistics happening here, laying out a timeline if we were to continue following that, hey, this thing is correlated like 92% based on a time ratio of what the structure has done before. And that in last week's end of week video, we were putting in there that, hey, you know, there's some green action in here. I'm not going to be fooled by it too much because I don't think we have much left in it if the structure is going to continue playing out and that this thing still has further down to go for Ethereum. And we could see that's obviously getting translated throughout the rest of the market at the same time. So I'm still not convinced that the end of this move is in for Ethereum yet. Does that translate into the rest of the market? Well, it's sure looking like it at this point. Now, one of the things we've been looking at over here has been the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And we've had this box drawn in here for the last couple of weeks. And that, hey, we've made a pretty quick move down here. Even on Friday, it almost had a 1,000 point decline. And as we're heading into the opening, because I'm recording this very early in the morning, I'm skipping my morning workout to record this video. We're actually right around here as this morning is starting. So when this market opens, if it opens still down here, it could bounce a little bit higher, but it's down almost 300 points to about 33,433. So we're deep down in here. Now we've been talking about this in many videos. We talked about this back there on April 6, breaks from the range, Bitcoin price chart moves, down with altcoin market as stocks slip, in which we've been looking for the Dow Jones to make that pull back down in there. We've studied these ABC structures. We've studied where they come back to find support. And we're now getting back in there, right? So this is from April 6th. And again, here on April 12th, bear versus bull structures as big whack for Bitcoin price chart revisits lows with altcoin market, looking for it still to go back down in there. And so over here with the stock market, as we know, we've had an ABC correction that has pulled back down in here. We've compared these structures before, compared the accumulation structures that happened down here at the bottom and how we've seen that happen exactly there before as well. And then the thing was to look for a pullback to pull us back down into here, which as we can see right now, as we start out this new week, that's that's really where we're at. So we could see how low this all pulled back down in here. And we could see where we are right in here at this point right now. So we're certainly in there for the pullback on the Dow. I wouldn't want to see it go much lower than that because then things start to change. But my thoughts were that it would pull back down into this box. This was the idea that I had. And here we are. Now it's time to see it hold. For many, that doesn't really matter. They don't find a huge correlation between the Dow Jones and the rest of the cryptocurrency market. But I've gone through it time and time again to show that for bullish bull runs to happen in the cryptocurrency market, they are all tied to when the Dow Jones can go on and set new all-time highs. When those new all-time highs can get set, that's when the market has taken off with it. So for our structural setup that we've had going on in here, this has been what we've been looking for. We hold in here. Uh, you see what comes next. That's the beginning of it, right? So fingers are crossed. We get our hold in there because if we do, it shows excitement coming. Now, if we for some reason start breaking through this thing and start heading lower, there's no telling there. I won't have a clear read on what's going on with it. I don't know how low this thing could go. 
And I hate it when people say that because that's a fine art of technical analysis content that's put out there on the internet, right? This could happen. This could happen. I don't know what's going to happen, but I think it's going to be bullish. And then this, this, this can happen. And then you know what? I'm right in the end, no matter what, right? That stuff drives me nuts. I try to absolutely limit that as much as possible on my YouTube channel. But I'll say if we break through there, I'll have a hard read on that. It will not look like what I expected it to look like. But I can say, as we are right in here, it does look like what I expected it to look like. And I just showed you two different videos where we've talked about it. We've talked about it in way more than just those two videos. Those were the two I could grab the quickest. I always try to back things up with why I feel the way that I do. So you got a couple of videos. You got the structures to see why we're talking about this price level in the first place. So, so far, it's fine. But if we broke through there, it would be a different read and we'd have to assess as that comes. But otherwise, we're right in there of where we should be. Now, moving back to Ethereum, right? We we're talking last week how this whole move right in here is 92% of the time that it took for the initial fall. That's equivalent to what happened for Bitcoin in here. Judging by the amount of time that it took for this to play out, if we continued moving at that, at that speed, it would take about 50 days for Ethereum to work out this downward move to get this B leg completed. That gets you out there to mid to late May for Ethereum to finally finish wrapping up this B leg. So a total of about 50 days. So it would still show about a month left of Ethereum moving down, which means, you know, we know how this market works, right? It could just range for a long time. And then in the last day or two, finally work its way out and then start working its way up as we see, which as we discussed on Monday and Tuesday of last week, for it to finally wrap itself up somewhere around September, if it continues moving at the same time ratio of what these structures have done before which as we also showed also correlated with what happens with bitcoin over here to get back into retracement levels if it were to remain within this upward parallel channel that it would get you out there into september and while there's a lot of worry out there about today's price action happening in here i hope by showing what we see over there in the dow jones that we see the confluence that hopefully that's the bottom there for the dow jones we see that bitcoin's still ranging within this area nothing crazy has happened within here it's still residing within this trend I think just that what people are expecting to come out of Bitcoin is some type of actual real grinding trend that is visible and they can easily pick it out. But it's in a range, right? It's in an upward sloping trending range that is a big range. And every time we get down near the bottom end of the range, there's a lot of panic and a lot of fear, which is obvious in here. We see the fear. We see the extreme fear. We see it all over Twitter, too, that, hey, we're going to break down now. It's, it's over. And what happens every time we get to the top of the range, everybody gets super excited, right? So it, it just keeps happening over and over again. We get to the top of the range. Everybody's euphoric. We get to the bottom of the range. Everybody says we're in a bear market. We get to the top of the range. Everybody's euphoric. We get to the bottom of the range. Everybody's panicked. And while I'm one of the few that have been a bearish on Bitcoin for quite a long time, I was expecting the top to come in here for Bitcoin. It would be just so incredibly unusual and unlikely to just head off into an extreme bear market after just barely crossing over the 382 Fibonacci retracement level. It's just that these things work their way back up to retracements and then plunge. And I am a believer that Bitcoin is going to go much lower. You know, I, I see a lot of people thinking that the bottom is going to come in there at the 200 day moving average or the 200 week moving average down there in the mid two mid 20,000s, I don't think it's going to find a bottom there. I think I think in best case scenario for Bitcoin, it's going to find a bottom right there around 13,000 to 14,000. But I could see Bitcoin going as low as into the 2000s. So I'm absolutely an ultimate bear on Bitcoin. And I do believe that's the long term trajectory of Bitcoin. But just understanding how price action works and how markets work, it would be so insanely unusual to retrace back above a 3A2 and then go plunging off into a deep bear market that's very uncommon that's very unusual you're going to usually draw back in everyone who's going to put their laser eyes on their profiles and they're going to say we're going to 100k there's going to be some incredible news narrative to go with it at the same time that's going to bring euphoria to make it so where you can't afford not to buy bitcoin and then that's when the market's going to turn over on itself that's the most common way things play out so it's just a patience game over there on Bitcoin and over here on Ethereum. But that's why I keep looking over there to the altcoin market to see when can we get that breakaway to happen in there. And that way you keep looking over here at this dominance chart and it's just like almost like living in Groundhog Day, right? It's like it's getting down here and it's been stuck here since December. So it's just teetering on the edge without having any type of break happening yet over here in the dominance, but stuck down here at the lows for quite a long time. 
and that it's common for these structures right in here. They come back and they'll back test that broken support, hang down here at the lows, and then eventually they'll go plunging on down, which is what we commonly see in here until it finally gets its break and goes. And like we talked about so much, what we call it like the double bounce, right? You know, you get back in there, hang out at the lows for a long time, and then finally it just lets go, which is, you know, exactly what we have happening in here. It's just been like Groundhog Day and how long can you wait? So with Bitcoin, there's nothing really crazy going on in here. With Ethereum, it's still just going to keep following this. If it follows my thesis of what's happening here is that, you know, Ethereum is just kind of like not where the action is going to be in this market. It's going to be looking more towards the rest of the altcoin market for me, in which we're still just waiting on it to turn itself up. And we've now been down here for three months. As we know, we've held all the retracement levels in here. We held the 702 Fibonacci retracement level in here, but it's still just working itself. And we're all getting impatient, but in the end, still things haven't broken. You take out that 702 retracement, level then you take out that 786 fibonacci retracement level yeah things start getting worrisome but in the end this thing isn't breaking and falling apart it's just our emotions and our impatience that's really getting tested at this point speaking of impatience we'll talk here about what's going on with the ripple versus sec lawsuit and the xrp price chart on Friday afternoon, both parties, including Ripple and the SEC, filed joint scheduling letters proposing opening briefs for summary judgment and expert challenges in August and then closing briefs a few days before Christmas. So essentially that this case will be wrapped up before Christmas and that we would be getting a ruling from the judge sometime in early 2023, potentially around March, I believe is what I read out there. Now, this created a lot of buzz over there on Twitter, in particular, a lot of frustration, right? I think a lot of people were hoping that this would wrap up by September or October, but now we have a date for around the first quarter of 2023 that this thing will be done. Now I look at it and I say, okay, yeah, look into 2023, but we do have dates, right? We have a timeline of when this thing will all end at some point. It is no longer just kind of, hmm, when could it possibly end at? We know definitively this thing will be wrapped up at the end of December and we'll have a ruling sometime in the earlier part of 2023. But what I found so interesting was how much frustration there was about that out there. Now, one of the questions I get asked all the time is, what do I think will happen to the price of XRP once this case ends or... If this case comes to a settlement, right? Everybody kind of talks about what price predictions are for a settlement or best case type of settlement, where the price will go to, how much it'll explode to overnight when something like that happens. And I've had a lot of discussions over the last week kind of theorizing my thought process and what happens with all of that. I would say the general public, the vast majority of retail investors are in the belief that we need to have settlement for price to explode or we need to have the case end for price to explode. Now, I've gone through the history of the XRP price chart many times on this YouTube channel, dozens if not a hundred times, to show that the XRP price moves with the rest of the market. Every bull run that XRP has ever had has been with the rest of the market. So to assume that it will take a settlement for price to explode would mean that the price of XRP will do something different from what it's done previously. So as you know on my channel, I don't talk about Ripple a tremendous amount. I'm focusing more on the broader aspect of the market and focusing more on the altcoin market as a whole because that's the condition that has led to XRP exploding. A lot of people want to put a lot of their eggs into the basket that know the only way the price can explode is if the settlement happens. But the history of the price charts show that for the price to explode, the rest of the market needs to be moving at the same time. So that's why I focus more on that. But considering that most people believe that a settlement or that the case has to end in order for price to rise, you see a lot of people out there kind of capitulating on it, saying to themselves, you know what, I can sell off my XRP bags. I have until 2023 to come back to them. I'll go play in the playground throughout the rest of the market. And then I'll come back to this in 2023, assuming that, you know, hey, they can go play in the playground. Mom's going to come outside the front door, yell, hey, it's time to come home for dinner. And then everybody's going to wait for you to get home for dinner. And then they're not going to put the food on the the table until you sit down at the table and then everybody will eat but the reality is it doesn't usually work out like that 
So if we look at the sentiment of where everybody collectively is kind of herded together right now, it's that they are frustrated that the case isn't going to conclude until the earlier part of 2023. And that price moving upward is dependent on that, which means there's now a year of waiting until anything like that can happen. Now, for one, I just say, all right, cool. We know this thing will be done in less than a year. So after dealing with this for a year and a half at this point, I'm glad to know there is at least light at the end of the tunnel. It's worst case scenario. We're looking at the earlier part of 2023. The other thing I know is I've watched, you know, I've watched nearly all of the videos that come out by Jeremy Hogan and try to catch as many videos as I possibly can that are put up, put out by the other lawyers in the XRP community to see that 95% of these cases end in settlement, right? 95%. So to believe that it has to go till then. So like if, if I'm, you're going to go down the mindset of saying, I'm going to sell off these bags, I'm going to go to different aspects of the market because I have until 2023. Well, there's only a 5% chance that it's going to go till 2023, right? Or until summary judgment. There's a 95% probability that it's going to settle at some point that we don't know when. And if there's anything I've noticed in crypto, if there's anything I've noticed in markets, is that typically participants get wrong-footed, whether it's on the downside or it's on the upside, wrong footing happens all the time, right? So what's the thing that's happening right now? The participants are in the belief that the price is dependent on the case ending. They all believe they have until 2023. It means prices aren't going to do anything for a whole year. You can let go of these bags. You can go play in other parts of the playground and come back to this whenever you want to. So that's the general consensus right now. And also the general consensus is that price will explode after a settlement or after the conclusion of this case. But I had several conversations over the last week where I theorized that actually it would be the opposite of that, that XRP only moves up when the rest of the market moves up. If the rest of the market moves up, well, what we've always seen is that XRP moves up with it. But what happens if the price, if the market moves up together and XRP starts getting into that four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dollar price area, and then a settlement happens, and then the case concludes? There'll be a bunch of people who got left behind or there'll be a bunch of people who hold on because it's now settled and it's time to let this price really explode. So for example, if we saw something where prices just started moving their way up like this and we we're just grinding our way up and then we get up here and then boom, a settlement happens up in here. What will be the general consensus of the market at that time? The general consensus will be that, oh my goodness, we are now going to explode from here. We're really going to go to the moon now. But is it not possible that the settlement, that the conclusion of this case is the euphoric moment to get retail to buy the top? It's what happened to Bitcoin. It's what happened to Ethereum. It's what happens in most markets. The best news, the most euphoric news comes at the top. It does not give you time to go play in the playground and then call you home when it's time to come home, but instead goes and then gives you the best news at the very top. And I brought that up many times throughout the last week, and I could see a lot of different people's faces kind of being like, whoa, haven't thought about it in that way. But that's historically how things work the best news will come at the top. And that's the opposite of what we go through with a lot of our thought processes, right? Like the order of operations for a lot of people is that, you know, nothing can happen to price until the case is settled or until the case concludes. Once that happens, then price can rise, right? But what what people don't imagine, right? And I imagine it goes through my head because, you know, I I think the world's a stage. I think there's puppet masters pulling the puppet strings and everything is that buy the rumor, sell the news, right? Never in the wildest dreams of XRP holders would it be that the day that the case settles is the day to sell your bags, right? There's no way. Like, think think about everybody, you, think about it in your own mindset. Do you think to yourself, I've been in XRP for years, and then the day the case concludes, the day you're vindicated, the day it's finally proven that you were right the whole time, and that XRP is not a security, the case is settled, the U.S. exchange is relisted onto exchanges, and that's the day you sell. And you say, okay, good, I'm walking away now. Glad that wrapped up. We're done. I'm moving on. Like, imagine me writing this tweet on Twitter. I'm so happy to see Ripple beat the SEC and XRP is not a security. It's been a long wait to be vindicated for this day. For this, I'm selling my XRP. It was a great ride, guys. (laughs) And that's not what goes through our mind, right? We think to ourselves, oh man, now it's going to get even way better, right? Not that you have to suffer through all of this. You finally get vindicated. You were finally right. But that's also the same day you sell your bags and walk your way, walk away. Because that's the opposite of what most people think. Most people think that the day all that happens is the day to buy. 
because the price is going to explode. But instead, it's actually the day to sell. So where I'm, where I'm getting at with all of this is I understand that a lot of people are frustrated to see that you know the case will be done in the earlier part of 2023 in a worst case scenario if it goes all the way to summary judgment and the judge has to rule on all of this, right? We know there's a 95% probability that these cases settle or at least 95% of SEC enforcement cases end up settling without going all the way to summary judgment. But what we also know is that the vast majority of retail investors believe that Price can only rise based on the sentiment and end up happening. But we know that these charts prove that XRP's price rises with the rest of the cryptocurrency market. And I theorize that the price of the XRP actually ends up rising with the rest of the market. And that we see what typically happens in this market is that good news comes at the top and that a lot of people are basing their strategies around I have until 2023 to do whatever I want. And then once the case gets closer to being settled, that's when I can you know, start accumulating XRP. That's kind of the mindset of a lot of people and that people believe that the price will explode based off of the case ending. But history shows that good news, great news, exciting news comes at tops and it would be the most illogical thing for it to occur at the top and to actually sell at the actual top on the day that the settlement happens or on the day that the the case ends up ending, right? That that wouldn't sit right in the minds of retail investors. And it's always those things that make the most sense to me. Whatever the general herd, the general thought process is the opposite of would make the most sense to me. And that makes the most sense to me. XRP rises with the rest of the market like it always has. And then the actual really good news comes at the very top and that the smartest thing to do will be the hardest thing to do being sitting through something like this for this long, finally getting vindicated, finally, you know, being told it's not a security exchange is relisting it. But at the same time, instead of being the one buying it, you're the one selling it on that news. That would be very hard for a lot of people. It'd be incredibly hard for a lot of people. And that's what makes it seem pretty likely to me. And so while there's frustration out there on the timeline of this on how long this could take for Ripple and for the SEC saga to come to an end, James Filan commented on it and said, many people are questioning why Ripple agreed to this schedule. My gut feeling is that there was a trade-off, a longer briefing schedule, but the elimination of the pre-motion Rule 56 practice. If Ripple didn't agree, there would be more scheduling disputes that in my estimation would have taken up even more time and Ripple would have lost that battle if the past is any guide then the motion schedule would have gone well into 2023 in my opinion this was a very smart move by ripple in locking in this schedule so not all bad news but probably the right move for ripple to make in there and as we know with the price chart here with xrp yeah we're still waddling around in here but still a very common structure happening in here with our crash retrace reaccumulation just a lot of reaccumulation right but otherwise nothing breaking down in here except for people's patience. But in the end, the main thing on my radar for today, at least, is going to be the Dow Jones over here, which when we look at the pre-market data, the E-mini Dow, Dow futures, we're still holding in here. Market opens in about 30 minutes from me speaking right now. I'm about to start exporting this video and get it out a little bit earlier. But this is going to be what I'm watching for the most part today. And for some reason, Dogecoin has turned green over here. Otherwise, it was a busy week and weekend for me being in Dallas. I even ran into an XRP OG that many of you may remember. Green Eggs and Sam from To The Lifeboats. We had lunch together. And I'll dive more into that and talk more about that later on in the week. I just know today. Quite climatic with a red start to the week. But hopefully we find some relief coming soon as this Dow Jones attempts to hold this area. So that's what I'm watching today. Dow Jones Industrial Average. It's reached the price levels we were looking for. Bitcoin just keeps creeping along and it's more quality time to spend together. Retrace, Ethereum just keeping on creeping on, which if time will continue to follow, this whole thing takes 50 days to play out. We won't see these prices down here until late May. And we're all just in the waiting game for the Bitcoin and Ethereum dominance to break down, which has been stuck here for four months. So probably just start one day you know one day it's gonna go is that day today is that day tomorrow who knows it's been four months but we've seen it and seen it time again these things typically break down and that's good for the altcoin market and we know this phase for bitcoin back in 2018 was fantastic for the altcoin market so a little bit of a patience game out there my eyes are really focused mostly on the dow jones today to see if that level can hold 
That's the level we were looking for. We've talked about it in multiple videos. That's where my focus is today. Otherwise, it was a pretty exhausting week, an exhausting weekend. Like I mentioned last week, the goal was to try to get three videos out for the week. I was able to do that. I got three out for the week. Feels good to be back, back on my regular microphone at my desk and time to get back into the swing of things. So I learned a lot on my trip, but I'm happy to be home. So on that note, we'll go ahead and wrap this thing up, guys. I want to thank you so much for watching my channel. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you could be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor, but if you ever need a pick me up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.